Okay, I'm up here at uh, Building 165 at uh, Mac Weather here. So it's kind of a bad time to do it. The observer isn't here right now, so I can't really tell you what he does. But this is where the observer sits. As you saw in my video for launching a balloon, I took a video from up here. And this is where our uh, forecaster sits. He is currently here. <laughs> he um, forecasts the weather for all of McMurdo. And do you do South Pole too? I don't do South Pole. Only uh, the tr uh, Charleston uh, Roth does the uh, pole. Charleston Roth? Okay. Cool. Nice. <clears throat> what would you say is one of the challenges you face while you're uh, forecasting here? <laughs> As of you learned, you know, or. Like, uh, One of the challenges here, is yeah. just getting used to the patterns, weather patterns. Yeah. Knowing the weather patterns takes a little bit of time. Uh, but once you get the weather patterns down, uh, forecasting can become a lot easier. And also, too, one of the other, one of the other things is just, uh, you know, forecasting timing of uh, when uh, the weather is going to happen. Sometimes we don't have a, you know, we don't have, you know, many of the tools that are used in the uh, United States. So the only thing we have is just satellite and uh, model data to kind of give a, a, a taste, uh, give us an idea of what's, what is coming or what to be expected. We do have uh, systems, uh, you know, uh, automatic weather systems that uh, Cal here keeps and yep. maintains. <laughs> So he kind of he's uh, he's very crucial to our operations, his forecasting operations. So. Um, and then uh, in the summer, <clears throat> when it is summer at least, because they know it's not summer anymore. But you you give a uh, brief to pilots, right? To for like that the South correct. Pole yeah. and yeah, we give going back brief, to the, go north as well. We give briefs uh, to uh, pilots to the. Uh, LC-130 pilots and to the uh, KBA pilots where they go out to take uh, scientists to their field camps uh, to do their science aspirations. And uh, basically we are here to help support that and provide them weather knowledge, weather intelligence for what to expect at those locations. Sweet. Appreciate it. And you, how long have you been here? Like, uh, this is, I've done this for four seasons now. Four? Yep. And then you have done a winner, right? A winner I over. have done a winner. Yep. And uh, I've done one winner and three summers. Uh, so two, yeah, two summers, excuse me, and two, uh, two tours back in Charleston. So. Yep. Sweet. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. And you see all tour. this wild, crazy <laughs> hair. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I've been here too yeah. long. Yeah. He. Uh, he, his flight might get delayed. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I don't know. The weather's been uh, been acting a little strange, but cool. Thanks, John. Appreciate Hi, no it. Problem. And uh, also during the summer, there this is where the other forecaster sits. There's just a bunch of monitors for them as well, same as what John has. This right here is a little version of their uh, radio, kind of. When they broadcast um, certain conditions, they need to go be able to talk to all the other channel um, the people out on the ice shelf or people trying to go out and issue certain conditions. <clears throat> and as far as what the Weather Observer really does, um, they they give out observations, obviously. So they have certain requirements where they have to give certain observations on every you know three to six hours or however they do it exactly and then they all are also out there at Phoenix for the flight so they go out there for the flight and give observations uh, more frequent observations so the pilots can get the most accurate observations as they're coming into land a couple more offices just for extra personnel and then you have maybe a, man a manager or so sweet appreciate it thanks man